Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is swim. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you're likely to hear or see the verb swim used is to mean to propel, which means move forward, to move one's body through water using one's arms and legs. Uh, as I mentioned with yesterday's verb of the day, run, I've picked swim because we're only about 10 days away from the Olympics. And if you follow this international event, then you are certainly going to hear this verb used. And I have to tell you, I'm a little partial. This is one of my favorite verbs, one of my favorite actions to do. Um, and I'll share a little more about that as we go along. A second way you might hear the verb swim used is pretty similar to the first, but the first definition was really talking about people. In the second definition, we're going to talk about fish or other aquatic animals, so animals that live in water. They too can move themselves by using their fins, their tails, or, or some other bodily movements. So again, they're moving themselves through water. You should know that swim is an irregular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, I want you to pay attention, our verb ends w-i-m or consonant vowel consonant it's one syllable so we need to double that ending consonant and you can see that there on the screen i've spelled s-w-i-m-m-i-n-g and that forms swimming the past tense form of this verb has a vowel change so we go from s-w-i-m to s-w-a-m or swam the participle form of this verb is swum, S-W-U-M. So uh, again, one of these kind of unusual patterns, uh, one of our irregulars. Um, I will point out that there are several verbs in English that go from an I in its base form to an A in the past tense to a U. Another example of this could be drink, drank, drunk. Um, so sometimes it's a good idea to group these verbs together and kind of study them at the same time in, in order to sort of recognize that pattern. So again, swim, swam, swum. Those are the forms you should know. The verb swim is actually used quite a lot with phrasal verbs, and we're going to focus on that today instead of doing any individual uh, practice with uh, our particular uh, verb and, and various verb tenses. But I'll point those out as we talk about and look at some of our phrasal verbs. So the first one you might hear or see is swim about or swim around. These two can uh, generally be used interchangeably. The meaning is going to be the same. And so here it, it really means we're, we're doing that action of moving through water, um, but we don't have a uh, really like set plan or goal. I intend to swim from here to there. I'm just going to swim about. That's what aimlessly means here. So you're going from place to place. An example of this could be, we'll swim around the lake this weekend, right? So no structured plan, we'll swim from this point to this point so many times, and just kind of from place to place and enjoy our weekend. Will swim around is an example of the simple future using will, um, just, to, just to point that out. A second way to use swim around, um, it has nothing to do with water. The second meaning for this is to have thoughts, ideas, or sort of other intangible things, things you can't see, move quickly. So um, many times we think of this as like thoughts swimming in one's head. So they're moving around really quickly like they're in water. An, exa an example of this phrasal verb in a sentence might be, so many names were swimming around my mind after the first day of class. This can happen to a lot of teachers as we meet a bunch of new students all at once, think, oh, wait, who was this? 
and, and maybe we had uh, students, uh, multiple students with the same names, can be hard um, initially to remember everyone. So here, we're swimming around in, is an example of the past progressive or the past continuous. So talking about an action that was in progress during a point in the past. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is to swim before. And this particular phrasal verb is usually um, kind of used in a longer phrase uh, to swim before one's eyes. So uh, again, this is not a literal in water type of, uh, of meaning. It means to have something. It could be sort of spots, visions, pictures, if you will, that sort of appear in your vision. Okay. An example of this could be, her brother's face swam before her eyes as she tried to fall asleep. So here, she's maybe having uh, visions or pictures in her mind. She's kind of seeing her brother's face. Sometimes, uh, I, I guess I've seen this more used um, in literature as people are trying to describe what a particular character is thinking or feeling. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is to swim for. Oh, I should add, sorry, swim before or swam before. My last sentence there was an example of simple past tense. Now let's take a look. To swim for means to attempt to reach someone by engaging in the activity of swimming, moving through water. An example of this, the lifeguard swam for the struggling swimmer. Okay, so lifeguard, a person whose job is to watch and make sure people are safe either at a pool or a beach or other body of water. Okay, so that is also another example of the simple past tense. Okay, now I've got a few more phrasal verbs to look at. Uh, the first one will be to swim in. This can have a couple different meanings. The first goes back to that idea of being in water um, and you're immersing, you're, you're putting your whole body um, into some water. An example of this could be, I've swum in the ocean several times. Here's an exam example of the present perfect. So we see that uh, have used in a contraction form there, and then we see the participle form of the verb. So it means my whole body has been in the ocean and I've been moving through the water. And that is true. I have done that several times. A second way to use swim in is to mean to experience an overabundance of something. So having a lot of something. An example of that could be the child was swimming in new toys after her birthday party. This child just had huge quantities of new toys. So that's that idea of overabundance, maybe more than what you can do with. Probably here, more toys than this child could ever play with. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is swim into. This can also have a couple different meanings. The first is, again, connected to moving through water, so swimming from one location to another. An example of that, the scuba divers swam into an underwater cave. So they moved uh, maybe from the surface of the water into a cave. They moved from one location to the next. This is another example of the simple past tense. And I think I might have forgotten, I'm sorry, um, the second swim in was swimming in new toys. That's another example of past progressive or past continuous. Okay, back to swim in too. Let's look at the second meaning for it. If, some, if someone or something swims into uh, an opposite direction of a particular force, that force, it could be a wave, a current, a tide. Um, that's another way to use this phrasal verb. So an example of that, they're going to swim into the waves for the first half of the race. So this particular sentence is referencing open water swimming. When many people think of swimming, particularly in the middle of the United States, you might think of pools, um, but there are many races that are done in 
open water, so not a pool. This could be a lake, could be an ocean. Um, this is actually, it's also part of the Olympics. It's an Olympic event, open water swimming. The last phrasal verb we'll take a look. Oh, so they're, go they're going to swim into is another example of simple future. This is using be going to. So we might be discussing a plan here. Uh, last phrasal verb now, swim with. This means to swim in the same direction of some force in the water. So again, you might hear this with the current, with tides, with the waves. So you're, you're kind of going in the same direction as it, and that tends to be a lot easier than swimming into something. An example might be, we should swim with the current. So in this sentence, someone is giving advice. That's why we see the modal should here, um, telling us uh, what's advisable. Maybe it's, it's smarter, it's easier, it's better to swim with the current instead of against it. Now, let's spend a little time looking at words that are related to our verb swim. And the first word we're going to look at today is just the noun form of this word. Okay, um, It can refer to the act of swimming or a period of time in which one is swimming. So, An example of that might be, we went for a swim after hiking for a few hours. It was a great way to cool off. So, here, someone is referencing, they, they did the action of getting in the water, moving, moving through that water. Another related word you're likely going to hear during the Olympics is swimmer. This is also a noun. It's a referencing a person or an animal that swims. An example of this noun in a sentence might be, there are four swimmers on the relay team. And you'll see that uh, relay events, um, again, connected to the Olympics. The next noun we'll look at is swimming. And I know some people might say, hey, we, we talked about that earlier. It's the progressive form. It is, but it can also be a gerund. So this is another area where English can get kind of confusing. This, again, might look like the progressive or continuous form to you but it can function like a noun in a sentence. Um, and so when we're using this, this gerund, uh, we're referring to the sport or the activity of moving oneself through water, using your arms, your legs, etc. So an example of this would be, I go swimming four times a week. And that is a true sentence. I love doing it. Uh, I get up uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturdays at 5.30 and may swim uh, about a mile, mile and a half. So now as you're looking at this, you might be thinking, well, wait, how do I know when it's a noun versus a verb? So let's examine the sentence, right? Do we see any other verbs here? Sure, we see go. So that's another indication. Um, you might see this swimming after the verbs like, love, or, or maybe the negative, I don't like, he doesn't like, uh, he, or they don't love, um, etc. So when you see other verbs, then that's another good indication. This is acting like a noun, or it is a gerund in the sentence. The last word I'm going to leave you with today is swimmingly. And this should be an adverb. I have a little typo in my notes. My apologies. So um, when you hear this adverb used, it means that something is going very smoothly, not a lot of problems, or something is, is satisfactory, right? So it's not bad. It's, it's not poor. An example of, of this might be the new project has been going swimmingly. So means it's going well. We're not having a lot of problems, issues, um, nothing, nothing major to report, and that can always feel good. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.